It was the best of times and the worst of times. And the north of the borough gets the worst because of accidents of birth and because that's just the way it works. And yes, you guessed, the south gets the best. And the rest of the country only registered that Kensington had a proletariat when it shocked the commentariat by electing a Labour MP five nights before a fire on the fourth floor grew faster and further than it was supposed to do and grew from its room and consumed and entombed a towel full of humans. The rich and the powerful were unscorched, untorched. They went untouched, unburned, unburdened by losing pretty much everything. Until then, most folks thought that Kensington hosted mostly royals and millionaires. Not the toilers, but the heirs and your graces in palaces and similar places, and with more money than you could possibly know what to do with. And skeletons. They knew that Kensington had skeletons, skeletons in its museums, skeletons in its graveyards, and now the skeleton of what hundreds of people used to call home calls out the skeletons from the cluttered cupboards of the town hall, stubborn behind a firewall, a smoke screen wiped clean by the dinosaurs of class rule, the boars and the fools who rush and stomp around, crushing lesser life forms into the ground. The rich and the powerful tightened our belts but not their own and a tower full of people lost their life or their home. The rich don't live in tower blocks or social housing stops. When they reside in tall buildings they are called luxury developments with opulent embellishments and a panoramic view from the penthouse, not a cheap to rent house nor a worn and spent house, high flyers in high rises at high prices, high status in high places. They don't live in flats, they live in apartments. They live apart in fire-resistant compartments with state-of-the-art smoke alarms. And so they should. They're entitled to a fire escape, a safe space, a comfortable place to live, but so is everyone. And you can be sure that in every apartment, on every floor, there is a sprinkler system. And if there is cladding, then it's gilded wrapping with all the trappings, not lined with aluminium, the bare minimum, second best, failed the test, discounted price, discounted advice, discounted concerns about how fast it burns, skin flint, say their skin, cheap as chips and about as good for you, off the back of a lorry and onto the walls of the towers in the sky where the common people come to live and die the rich and the powerful get their riches and their power from the labours of the powerful and their neighbours and people like them, like us. The first named dead had fled a war zone. He wanted to go home when the war was done. He was learning skills to help rebuild, but he was killed under enemy fire. People die like this when people live like this, squashed into boxes in tower blocks, put up on the cheap, putting up people, keeping the least possible cost per life lost, per square metre or square feet of prime real estate, a drain on the rates. People die like this because people are made to live like this by a system that gives only to the few, not a civilised living to the likes of you, by a system like this run by spibs for hire, who wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. The rich and the powerful keep their riches and their power, while a tower full of humanity, of friendship and of family, of talent and potential of working class folk goes up in smoke. It's always the people in the cheap seats. The lower orders, servants' quarters, the back stairs, disrepairs, the slum colony going through life in economy class, the wage slaves, not the masters, the underclasses. And what of those who run this system? The decision takers, policy makers, architects of TMOs and ALMOs and scrapping, rent capping, and right to buy and buy to let and let's get by on whatever we can get. A bed, a roof above our head, a home not fit for habitation, voted down the legislation, closed the fire station. Compassion fakers, quick to forsake us. In Kensington or Westminster, hold the line, then resign. Anything to avoid responsibility, anything to pass the blame. Heads must roll, heads must hang in shame. The rich and the powerful. Give the victims the body swerve, they've got a nerve. While the powerful get donations from neighbours and from strangers that fill the community centre shelves, given by people a little less unfortunate than themselves. The rich and the powerful close the doors in the faces of you and yours to talk about the powerful and sanitise the cause 
of death and destitution on 24 floors.